Our next story looks at one of France's most celebrated and perhaps overrated film directors, Jean-Luc Godard. The incredible thing about Jean-Luc Godard is that nobody understands his film, not even Jean-Luc himself. <laughs> and that is why Eurotrash has prepared a little educational film for you, my British chums, explaining exactly how to watch a Jean-Luc Godard movie. For the real new wave effect, it's good to mess up your hair a bit. Then you must smoke, a lot. Juxtapose sound effects and jump cuts are important. Continuity is a nasty word here. Throw in a love story and some self-referential film within a film stuff. A bit more love story and then the ever popular cinema as a mirror of society scene. And when in doubt, stare. It can be in any direction you want, just stare. It is a very nice movie, Antoine, especially the love story. But I still don't understand anything. <laughs> don't worry, Jean-Paul, you're just here to smile and look pretty. Anyway, we now present you with a Eurotrash exclusive, jean Cul Godard's version of Shakespeare's King Lear, a film so confusing that not even the late show could understand it. <laughs> it was at the Cannes Film Festival in 1986 at the Carlton Hotel that Jean-Luc Godard and Menachem Golem signed their infamous contract for King Lear, on a dinner napkin. He said, I want to do King Lear for many years, he said. He said, it's a very good story. Father, daughters, the fool, life, drama, family. I want to do such a film. I said, it's a fantastic idea. Godard would eventually throw out most of Shakespeare's Lear, although he did keep the character of the fool, which here he appropriately plays himself. I ain't interested in names. Les noms ne m'intéressent pas. Why is that? Oh, uh, Look, no names, no lines, no lines, no story. This film fails. It simply has a lot of jumbled garbage about the impossibility of making a film in the hour age, which was frankly seen before too often and in too much of the same way. In crafting this masterpiece of artistic masturbation, with its tired symbolism and its chase scenes that look like outtakes from the Benny Hill show, Godard needed an equally self-obsessed accomplice. We are calling Mr. Norman Mailer to try and write, to get him to write the script. It's a crazy idea, but it's an idea of Godard. And, and, and only Godard could think of Norman Mailer to write Shakespeare. Uh, so I believe it will happen. Mailer. Unfortunately, it did happen. Oh, that's a good way. What's worse, Godard even convinced the crabby old writer to appear in the film. That's a good way to begin. Uh, even Woody Allen, who barely agrees to perform in his own movies, makes a brief, albeit painful, appearance as either King Lear or a skinny little man in an editing room. It's perhaps the first time that Lear's great soliloquy is delivered in a full Brooklyn accent. Like as the waves like as make the waves. towards the pebbled shore, make towards the pebbled shore. So do our minutes. So do our hasten minutes. Hasten to their end. Woody Allen. Why is he there? He appears not to know. There's no evidence on screen that he knows what he's doing, what role he's playing. Why is he sitting in front of the steam bag editing table at the end? Why is he saying these apparently disconnected words? And why are there arbitrary soundtracks behind him? I don't think he knows, and it's difficult for us to divine as well. Perhaps Godard's most bizarre casting choice was the teen star Molly Ringwald as Cordelia, shown here in the obligatory I touch the mirror to know myself scene. Try as she may to be a serious actress, poor Molly still sounds like Marsha of the Brady Bunch at the school play. Sure. I shall never marry like my sisters. Je me marierai jamais comme mes sœurs. To love my father all. In the film, which is finally nothing more than a series of annoying little moments like this, it's the maestro himself, Godard, who has the last word, even if it's not from his mouth. Uh, just what are you aiming at, Professor? You said it, John Luke. Our sentiments exactly. When the professor farts, the moon things are trembling. Professor, there are two people here. 